Hi, today I'm going to be going over how to wrap fabric around a pipe. So this is a pipe about an inch and a quarter, I'd say, and I've already started wrapping. Um, this is a toddler sheet. Um, it's fitted, so I wanted to do kind of more of an organic shape um, with it, um, more not like a geometric pattern because of the fitted um, seams and the elastic, I feel like that would be very hard to achieve. So I thought this would be a good pattern for something like that. Um, so I'm going to, I've already started, you can see here, it's all scrunched up. It's been wrapped around and scrunched and then wrapped, wrapped around again to, um, get maximum resist. So I'm going to finish up the rest of the pole here. You can see there is quite a lot of fabric left. And this is the pole it's in here. Um, so I'm gonna just finish it for you guys and um, kind of walk you through how I like to do it. So um, the first thing, so you can see here, this is like the end of where it's been scrunched. And let me undo it a little. What I like to do is go around with the string about an inch and a half between the wraps. So you can see how far apart the strings are. Um, and then I go, keep going down, and you want the fabric to be wrapped around the pipe um, in a diagonal way. So I started with one corner up here. So it's, one corner and then you like wrap it around the pipe. Um, like this is, this is the corner, here's a corner, here's another corner. Okay, so before I get too far into the wrapping, I'm gonna show you the video I made of starting it. So like I said, I tied the corner up at the top, diagonal, and then started wrapping around and gradually scrunching the fabric up and as I keep going down, the fabric keeps getting thicker and thicker because it's diagonally wrapped. But I just keep going and keep scrunching. So back to the rest of the video. Um, this is a really big piece, so I, I'm just kind of going as I can to make it as even as possible um, and to wrap it around as nicely as, as neatly as possible. But it's a big piece of fabric, so it's a little bit like crazy and um, it will be, it'll give it more of an organic look. Um, so then I just go down a few times with this string and I try to keep it tight. And then I brace the top of the pole and I push it up as hard as I can. And then I come back with the string. Hey there, it's me again. So I'm basically just going to keep wrapping up the pipe and scrunching the rest of the fabric down uh, methodically as I go and just trying to keep it as tight as I can. Um, this is a form of a Rashi Shibori. Um, usually a Rashi Shibori is a little more like neat and tidy and it looks kind of like waves. Um, so this turned out a little more organic and you can see the results on the sides of the video. This is like a close-up photo of um, the pattern afterwards. And um, you can also use a wider pipe if you have access to it. I just didn't have access to a bigger pipe at the time. So um, there's a lot of different variations of that kind of shibori that you can try. Um, and I just wanted to say that when you're doing shibori, it's really important to consider what you're trying to dye when you're picking a pattern. So like I said, this piece is a fitted sheet. So it has elastic, it has corners, it's kind of like a kind of weird to fold. Um, so this pattern seemed like a good fit for the shape. Um, if you're dyeing yardage or squares or something smaller, you know, you can 
have a lot more control over the pattern. So just consider what you're dyeing when you're choosing a pattern. That being said, you know, you can kind of do uh, anything you want with shibori. There's no mistakes when it comes to tie dye in reality. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep tying all the way up until it's done. It's all ready to dip, it's wrapped up, and I'm gonna go outside to dip it. And I like to use pre-reduced indigo, and I'll put a card to the other videos where I talk about my recipe. So now I'm gonna dip this one, and this one has been wrapped on this pipe very tightly and scrunched down a bunch of times and then rewrapped. So the trick with this one is I wanna make sure it gets not too blue, but I don't have a lot of dye in the mat, so I like to tip it and then dip it in and roll, take it out. Then I'm gonna squeeze it this way. And let's see, can I put it like this? I wanna do the same thing over here. Dip it and roll. Whoops, still love it, that's okay. That's not good, sorry. All right, so I'm gonna check inside to see how blue it is. I think, I think it's gonna be a nice pattern. I don't wanna get it too blue. So you can see inside there, there's a lot of white still, which is good. If I think it's too much white, I can just try to sort of splash it, but that's tricky because it oxidizes. So you don't wanna do too much. All right, I think that's good for that one. So now it's time to reveal it. I've just let it sit for a few minutes and it's starting to oxidize. You can see it's getting nice and blue. Being careful not to cut the fabric, I just take the string off and reveal. So here it's completely oxidized and you can see it looks a lot like a geode or an agate pattern and I think it's really fun and pretty. I'm going to let it dry completely and then I'm going to wash it on hot with Synthropol and then do an extra rinse if possible, or maybe wash it twice and then dry on hot. Um, that's going to help set the indigo. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more tutorials and more Shibori inspired videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.